They say big game hunting is a sport only for the wealthy. Well, it didn't cost me much, except almost my life. This is another in the adventures of America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, Johnny Dollar. At insurance investigation, Johnny Dollar is only an expert. At making out his expense accounts, he's an absolute genius. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Britannia Underwriters Association, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during my investigation of the unscheduled performances in Maximilian Sandro's animal show. Or, all they needed was a clown, and then I showed up. Or, I once thought I'd run away with a circus. This one I wanted to run away from. Expense account, item one. $70.21, $70.21, train and cab fare from Hartford to a vacant lot just outside Brunswick, Georgia. The winter quarters of Maximilian Sandro's animal show. The first animal to show was an elephant. Bravo! Oh, bravo! Hey, uh, mister, where can I find Maximilian Sandro? Hey, uh, mister, I want to ask you a question. Please, you're not so loud. You upset the Blanca. I'm going to try to teach you an aria for the next season. An aria? Well, that should set opera back ten years. Ah! Oh, sweet! The sweet! That's the only musical elephant in the world. The Pocky Dermachanto. Well, look, I'll stop interrupting rehearsal if you'll tell me where I can find your boss. Maximilian Sandro. My boss? Yeah. <laughs> It is I. I am Maximilian Sandro. Oh, well, good. I'm Johnny Dollar from the insurance company. Oh, ho. Let's make it something else. Blanca, you rest. I'm going to come back when I'm through with Mr. Dollar. Well, as I understand yeah. it, Mr. Sandro. Oh, that's a poor Blanca. She don't like to see me go. You know, she's like a puppy to me. But this is the new black leopard that's uh, the beginning of all of my trouble. I'm going to show you to her. Someone has tried to steal her. And that's what I don't want, Mr. Doc. Well, since Britannia Underwriters insured her for 20000 that is what they don't want, too. Monsieur, it'll cost me too much to get her from Africa. To lose her, that would ruin my financials. Everything would go. Ah. <laughs> These are my monkeys. Yeah. Hi. Uh, look, Mr. Sandro, how does anybody go about stealing a neat little package like a black leopard? And why? Why? Mm-hmm. Because she's a very special leopard. She's a very big, a very shiny. I'm going to name her Ashanti. She's going to be my prize attraction. There's a lots of animal shows would like to have her. Oh, you uh, suspect your competition? Oh, see. Si. Well, when was the attempt made? One night the last week they make with the truck. They tried mm-hmm. to pull her cage away, and we saved her just in the time. Oh. See, it's my finches, the parakeets, and the toucan. And this is my crow. Yeah. Very nice. Colorful. Uh, did you try and trace the truck? Ma, no, so no way to trace. They went away. Whoosh, no lights. And this is something else that's not right at all. Oh, yeah? What's that? I'm going to make a big plan. I'm going to get all the money I can put a hands on to buy her from this man at Tex Randall. And now he said the money that was enough before is not enough now. He think he cheat me to surrender. Well, I'd like to help you with that too, Mr. Sandro, but uh, I'm afraid that's your problem. My job is to see that your leopard isn't stolen. I see, I know. You get to pay for your job, but you do it. And that's... Oh, no. There is a shot. There is uh, my leopard. <laughs> I guess somewhere way down in the tap roots of my family tree, there probably was an ancestor with a low forehead, bearskin overalls, and a club who went into an unpleasant double take when he found himself face to face with a leopard. I know the feeling I had when I saw a shanty was inherited from somebody. My feet wanted to run, but my eyes wouldn't leave her as she paced back and forth in about a 12 by 12 cage. Baleful yellow eyes set in a sable black face, ears laid back and tail lashing in anger and lips that drew up showing the nastiest set of choppers I've ever seen. He was beautiful, all right, but my vote would have gone to the iron bars that separated us. They were downright gorgeous. Don't waste the time of the walk back, you know, boy. You'll be a good girl. 
Pretty soon you and me will be good friends. You see, Mr. Dollar, right now, Ashanti, she's a very angry. She's a boil inside. But I'm going to know my animals. And not long, she's going to eat out of my hand. Yeah, well, she looks like she can make a meal out of it right up to the elbow. Oh, hey, slam Of course, you what? Oh, you. Who's this hombre? This is Mr. Dollar. He's a come from the insurance company. Well, howdy, Mr. Dollar. I'm Tex Randall. This is the man I tell you about. How are you? You mean you captured this thing? Yeah, I brung her in from the Togo Territory in West Africa. I thought my racket was tough sometimes. What'd you use, catnip? Nope. I dug me a pit, covered her with a mat and some dirt, put me a fresh killed goat in the middle, and when the cat fell in, I got some ropes on her and... Trust her up. Well, you make it sound simple. Oh, see, so make it sound simple. Then why does it cheat to me? Why don't stay with the first prize? Hey, now you take a listen to me, Sandro. I told you I'd give you your money back and sell this cat somewhere else. The trip cost more than I thought it would. And I ain't about to lose dough on it just to make you happy. Um, uh, sometimes I'm a think you don't talk straight. I'm going to go back to my elephant now, Mr. Dollar. Okay, Mr. Sandro. I'll check with the letter. He spent too much time talking to critters. He oh. don't make no sense out of nothing. Right. I'm glad you're here, Dollar. I ain't been 20 yards away from this cat since I got her here. Been bunking in that sleeping bag every night right close to the cage. Now maybe I can get a break. Well, then you must have been here the night somebody tried to put the snatch on her. Did you spot anybody? Nobody I could be sure of, except maybe the little blonde guy. He left me something to remember him by. Wait till I pull my shirt up. Look at there. Look at there on my back. Just took the stitches out today. Oh, ouch. Ouch is right. A little runt caught me half in and half out of my sleeping bag. Doc says if that knife blade had gone in another hair's breadth, I'd have been spilled. And with that happy thought, Tex Randall, a hard man to kill, left to go into town. I watched a shanty tear into enough raw meat to keep a kennel of Great Danes happy for a week after which she settled down for what you might call the original catnap. Sandro's elephant settled down to a short vocal lesson, and I settled down for a game of mumbly peg. But before I could get warmed up, I had a visitor. Hello. Wow, the Ava Gardner type with darker hair and olive skin. You look as though you could use some company, Mr. Dollar. Well, who couldn't? I was beginning to think the only females around here walked in all fours. Oh, I've had the same feeling about the males. Then, uh, then he didn't mention me. Who? Pop, the boss. Oh, no, no. Uh, Sandro didn't mention much of anything but his black leopard. Well, I'm Angela, his daughter. Oh, I see. He probably forgot to mention you on purpose, hoping to keep my mind where it belongs, on my work. Well, that's what I came to talk to you about. What can you do? You can't stay with Ashanti for the rest of her life, can you? Well, before I found out about you, I would have said no. Oh, please be serious. All right. There's only one thing to do. If the leopard isn't safe here, and from what I've seen and heard, I don't think she is, I'll just have to take her someplace else until this is all cleared up. Take her someplace else? Mm hmm Well, that would break Dad's heart. It would break the heart of the company that hired me if Ashanti turned up missing. Look, he can't take her on the road until next summer. We'll keep her safe until then. I'm sorry, but it's, it's all I can do. Oh, poor Dad. He's going to hate you for it, you know. Oh, well, that I can stand. But, uh... There's no sense you're wasting our time feeling the same way. I didn't say I would, did I? As a matter of fact, I was going to stay right here until you asked me out to dinner. Or something. Oh, well, let's not hurry. Stick around. I'll figure out where to invite you when I know you better. And there, during the waning hours of the Georgia day, I learned that, up to a point... Angela was an easy girl to know. She liked cocktails, dinner, and dancing, so that's the schedule we set up for later. As soon as Tex Randall showed up to temporarily relieve me of my duties as leopard sitter. But at martini time, I was still sitting. And may I say that the cocktail hour spent in the middle of a menagerie is not the restful period it's supposed to be. As soon as the sun dropped, the noise rose. 
wild brains in caged bodies reacting to the night, instinctively telling the countryside that whether they were free or not, this was their hunting time. I not only felt like Tarzan of the Apes, I felt uneasy. The shanty complained to me. A light from somewhere behind me glinted in her eye, then disappeared as she started her back and forth pacing again. It sounded like she was trying to tell me something. She was. I was too stupid to understand it. Oh! Whatever hit me from behind didn't land hard enough. I stayed on my feet, but a pair of strong hands twisted my arms behind my back. One hand pushed my wrist into a double hammerlock. The point of a knife was jabbed into my back and started moving me forward toward the cage. The lever stopped her pacing as she saw me coming. She reached out between the bars for me, her great paw spread, claws extended. The last thing I saw was her snarling face and the paw reaching. Then there was a lunge behind me and something hit my head again. The cocktail hour was over. I'd passed out without a drink. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Johnny Dollar. But first, last week, Vaughn Monroe's caravan saluted the Rose Bowl team. Tonight, Vaughn will play the favorite songs of Louisiana State and Oklahoma, the Sugar Bowl team. Vaughn's caravan will also bring you the five top tunes of the week as chosen by Variety. And later, Gene Autry will be here with his Western music and cowboy humor. The Vaughn Monroe Caravan and the Gene Autry Show are regular Saturday evening features of most of the same CBS stations. Now with our star, Charles Russell, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Well, sir... I don't know how I lived through that one, but as it turned out, I did. When I opened my eyes, I was still in Georgia, but that condition was about all that hadn't changed, for the worse. My head was not only aching in the back, but a new lump had been born above the bridge of my nose. But nothing else had been added. When I finally got to my feet, I saw that only a trace was left of a shanty, the Black Leopard. A pair of ruts in the dirt made when her wheeled cage had been hauled away. I started out to find Sandro on a telephone, but one of my feet found something else before I'd taken three steps. I didn't know how he had gotten where I was supposed to be, but he'd made it. Tex Randall, his neck twisted and the marks of claws on the side of his battered head. Police Department, Central Precinct, Sergeant Miller. Hello, my name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. I'm calling from the winter quarters of the Maximilian Sandro's animal show from the owner's trailer. I want to report two things. Yeah, well, wait a minute. There's a body you? out here that your coroner ought to take a look at, either accidental or murder. Well, hey, Lieutenant, get on Two? This, will you? Grand larceny. Somebody stole a black leopard. Oh, now, listen, this is your idea of a joke, fella. It's you too late to... to joke, Sergeant. Just send some men out. I'll give them the rest of the story when they get here. Joke yet? What passes for humor in Georgia, anyway? Hey, Sandro! Sandro, come home! Nobody answered me but an old Libyan lion, so I shut up. I browsed around Sandro's trailer while I was waiting for the police. I wasn't looking for anything, but I found it. On a table, there was a small Christmas tree that had been transformed into what is commonly known as a friendship tree, meaning that about a half a dozen Christmas cards were hung on with cellophane tape. There was nothing else to read, so I scanned through those. And the third one I opened, opened my eyes. It was inscribed, sorry, I can't be with you. Greetings from San Francisco. Your loving daughter, Angela. Before I could fully digest that tidbit, I heard a shoe scrape on the steps outside. Then the trailer door opened. Here he is, then. I told you we'd find him here. Yes, yes. Very good, my dear. 
The man with the Angela by whom I had so recently been taken in looked 50-ish, capable, suntanned, and well-armed. Well, 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 Mr. Dollar. You don't appear to be surprised. Well, after what's happened already tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if General Sherman dropped in on his way back from the sea. <laughs> yes, splendid, splendid. I admire a show of courage, a sense of humor at the point of a gun. Oh, think nothing of it. Sometimes my jokes are so funny, they kill people. <laughs> I think we'd better get him out of here, Ben. I don't think it's safe. Yes, you took the words right off the tip of my tongue, my dear. Shall we go, Mr. Dollar? Should I ask where and why? I've taken a small place in town. There, at our leisure, we shall discuss a fascinating subject. Mm -hmm. Namely, the whereabouts of a splendid black leopard. <laughs> Move right ahead, Mr. Dollar. Oh, my dear, run up to Harold's room. Fetch him down. I may need him. All right, then. Into this room, Mr. Dollar. And uh, please be seated. If you don't mind my asking, Ben, how do you manage... My dear to... sir, hmm? it just so happens that my full name and title is Sir Bennett Mountfort. The term of familiarity, Ben, is to be used only by my closest friends. Now, if you will couch your question properly... Oh, it wasn't important. I just wondered, since that gun seems to be so much a part of you, how do you manage without shooting yourself while shaving? <laughs> You've a ready wit, haven't you? I know the proper time and place for a weapon, my boy. I've learned from experience. I chose early in youth as my avocation the hunting of big game. If you had faced the last desperate charge of a wounded lion or a maddened rhino as I faced them, you too would realize that a good weapon properly aimed is man's best friend. Which uh, brings us to the subject of our mutual interest, the Black Leopard. Where have you hidden her? What makes you think I have? No, 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 no. Let's have no deception, sir. The report brought back by my charming accomplice, who so ably posed as the daughter of that stupid showman, Mr. Sandro, proves that you made no secret of your plan to carry off the cat to a place of safety. You will not deny that. Why should I? You wouldn't believe me if I did. Yes. <laughs> An admirable attitude, sir. Now, once more. Where is the leopard? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be worth much as a hiding place, would it? If you do not tell me, sir, your life will be worth very little. Come now. Perhaps your loyalties are misplaced. What did that market hunter, Mr. Randall, tell you about the cat? Not much. Except that he got a knife in the back, put there by somebody who was trying to steal her. Well then, sir. I'll spin you a tale that'll set your blood to pounding. What would you say, my boy, if I told you that that black leopard is worth a king's ransom? Well, I don't know. I'd probably ask why. Well, she is, sir, and I'll tell you why. She was captured in the Togo Territory, West Africa. I am quite familiar with that section. I've hunted there. A district par excellence for elephant, buffalo, and situtanga. As a matter of fact, I was there before and shortly after Randall's infamous trapping of that fine beast. Did he tell you that? Well, he did. Didn't make any impression. I hear there are a lot of people in Africa. Well, to continue. The Togo territory is inhabited by the Awe tribe, a group of long-headed patrilineal people whose most interesting characteristic at this moment is the fact that they are animal worshippers. Now, does the point sink home? Mm, vaguely. That leopard Randall snagged is important to them. Is that it? Yes, yes, precisely. You struck it. And they'll pay a veritable fortune for her return. One hundred thousand dollars in gold. And now that I've uh, let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, uh, do you have a price in mind? In return for which you will share with me the hiding place of the animal? Yeah, you go on back to Togo and I'll cable you the address. Ah, it's obvious, sir, that you are not in full command of your senses. Harold! Harold! Soldier I'm coming. Look, if Harold is your violence department, Ben, you can save your breath and his muscles. I'm not having any. Stay where you are, sir. I give you fair warning. Oh, nuts to your fair warning. If you want to find that black leopard, and I'm the only one that knows where she is, you're not going to do it by puncturing me. Come back here, you fool. Come back here. Take it easy, Ben. I'll get him from the stairs. That's far enough, Mr. Dollar. You better call off your infantry, Ben. 
All right, wise guys, here it comes. Harold, wait. Let him go. What's the matter? You crazy? He's going to steal me. Let him go, lest Randall have the upper hand. Oh, brother. As I went out, I caught a glimpse of the man Mountford had called Harold. The same little blonde runt Randall had talked about. That wrapped up the question of who had played tic-tac-toe with a knife on the Texan. But ten yards of Sir Ben's front walk later, I suddenly remembered Mountford's last words. Lest Randall have the upper hand, he said. It sounded like he didn't know Randall was dead. Which shook my head and in a strictly nonsensical way made sense. Well, there was only one place for me to go, so that's where I went. Back to Maximilian Sandro's animal show. When I got there, I was awake, but all the smart animals were asleep, except for one. Mr. Dollar! Mr. Dollar! Maximilian Sandro hailed me from the lee side of a tent. Come in, Mr. Dollar, into the shadows. The police is by my trailer. Where have you been, Sandro? I was hiding. But I worry so much about you. When I come back, where you are? You're not there. What do you mean by your black leopard's cage? I'd left. That place had unpleasant memories for me. Oh, see, see, me too. I'm a sad one. See, when I see that man, Randall, he's a push you to the cage with a knife. I'm a go crazy. I'm a nothing. I'm a run up and a push. So then you fall, you hit your head in the bottom of the cage. And then a shanty. She hit the Randall instead, and I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, uh, don't bother with an apology to me. No, 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 you don't understand. Look, I'm going to commit the murder. With these two hands, I'm going to push him on the leper. Oh, well, there's such a thing as justifiable homicide. You were saving my life. So let's not worry about it until it gets to court, if it does. Where did you take your cat? Oh, you know that... Nobody else has her, so you must. You were at the right place at the right time to haul her away. All right. I tell you true. See, I take her away where she's a safe. I keep her where she is until this trouble is no more. Oh, now, listen to me, Sandro. I know how you feel, but I've met the people who were after your leopard. They say they can get $100,000 for her back in Africa. $100,000? Consequential. Mm. For that kind of money, they'll never stop looking for her. The only way to stop them is to let them find her. And then we'll try and wind this thing up. Wind up? Does it mean finish? Yeah. Oh. I'm pretty sure I've been followed here. Now, will you take me to the hideout? Oh, no, sir. These people, they follow you there. I'm no like that. I don't either, Sandro. A hundred thousand dollars worth of cheese would even make a mouse. <laughs> Sandro was a hard man to convince. I wasted more words than a Republican campaigner, and then I used blackmail. Then I told him I'd turn him in for Randall's killing and testify against him instead of for him. He saw things my way. The leopard's lair turned out to be an abandoned barn five miles farther out of town, to which we went in a truck that Sandro had driven into that jungle-type vacant lot. Now, come. This way, please. This way. Okay. It's a little inside the door. A shanty was performing that old dance of hers again, pacing the length of her cage back and forth, her head swinging rhythmically each time she turned. We'd made ourselves easy enough to follow on the way out but my neck was getting stiff from helping my eyes follow the leopard's movements before I heard a sound outside the door. It sounded like a bolt jamming a shell into the chamber of a rifle. And that's what it was, because a rifle was what Sir Bennett Mountford was carrying when the trio came in. Close the door, Harold. I just did. You, my dear, stay here out of harm's way. Yes, sir. I'll be all right. Well, Mr. Dollar... I would say that the long stock is successfully completed. The search ended. You're quite a hunter, Mountford. Somebody should crown you with a coonskin cap, <laughs> with a raccoon still living in it. Yes. I'm glad to see you enjoying yourself, sir. 
since the time for levity is on the wing, so to speak. Errol. Yeah, name it. Keep these two in your sights with a ready finger on the trigger. I'll set about putting this vicious cat out of existence. No, no, he's not shoot my shanty. Hey, Montford, are you crazy? Put that rifle down. Shut up, Dollar. You aren't running things. Montford, if that cat's worth a hundred grand alive, why kill her? Because we shall realize a much greater profit with her dead. Namely, a half million of uncut diamonds that are hidden in the floor of her cage. Diamonds? Well, they couldn't have been safer, could they? Precisely Randall's idea when he put them there in Africa. Now stand aside, sir. I don't wish to fire through your head, but I will if I must. No. No, he's in a shoot to my shot. Hey, watch that maniac. He's going to let that cat out. Stop him. That fast. Don't move. I'll meet her charge. No, I shan't do wrong. To run for your life. Mountford had a lot of guts, but sometimes luck helps, and that night he didn't have any. A shanty sprang straight through the little door of a cage. She was still in the air when she went past him, head high, and as she did, one of her fatal front paws reached out for him. It looked almost delicate, but the force of the blow sent Mountford clear across the barn, and when he landed, he didn't move. A shanty streaked toward a square of night sky showing through a window, and she was gone. A shanty... Ashanti, come back. I turned back, away from the window, to check on the rest of our guests, but they were gone. Apparently, there was something about a leopard on the loose that had made a half a million dollars in diamonds, not as important to Harold and the phony Angela as distance between them and that barn. So, there I was, suddenly left with nothing to worry about. If you can call enough diamonds to stock the Kimberley mines, nothing. Expense account, item two. Uh, item two? A case like this and I haven't laid up a cent. Oh, well, Christmas is coming. Item two, three dollars. Cab fare from Brunswick Police Headquarters to a hotel. After giving them my statement, which they didn't believe until they saw those diamonds. Then they sent out a three-state alarm to pick up the phony Angela and Montford's shiv man, Harold. And expense account, item three, seventy dollars and twenty-one cents. Uh, train and cab fare, Brunswick to Hartford. Oh, and uh, this advice I'll toss in for free. At last report, a shanty was seen headed west toward Okefenokee Swamp, and Sandra was organizing a group to go after her. My advice is this. Don't insure the lives of those men. If you want to throw your money away, throw it to me. Uh, let's see. Expense account total, $152.70. Signed, yours truly, Johnny uh, Frank Buck Dollar. <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Charles Russell. Tonight's script by Paul Dudley and Gil Dowd was produced and directed by Ralph Rose. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Larry Dobkin, Bill Conrad, and Parley Bear. The special music is written and conducted by Leith Stevens. Your announcer, Bob Stevenson. Be sure to be with us at the same time next week when another unusual expense account is handed in by... Yours truly, Honey Dollar. Teamwork. That's the American way. Working together to produce more per man, per machine, per hour so that everybody on the team benefits. The American economic system is geared to benefit all of the people. Under this system, everybody moves together toward the common goal of better living. The better we produce, the better we live. For your free copy of the booklet, The Miracle of America, write Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. 
Stay tuned now for Vaughn Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of the same CBS station. This is CBS, where yours truly, Johnny Dollar, meets adventure every Saturday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.